This is Mark Belton, Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. I'm outside of Nugget Market here in Davis, California. I'm gonna show you guys how I shop. I'm gonna show you guys what I eat and exactly how I do it. I got this idea mainly because I feel like a lot of people have a better understanding on what to eat, but I think that a lot of people don't know how to eat. And I also get a lot of questions when it comes to keto or it comes to carnivore. People are like, I can't afford to do that. Now I can afford to do it in the space that I'm in now, the place that I'm in now in my life, but I've also done this diet on a budget too. So I'm gonna show you how I do it, how I roll. I'm gonna show you specifically what I buy and what I like to eat. But I'm also gonna show you guys what I buy for my children, what I buy for my wife, take you through all that. And then also try to wrap it into how to do it in an economical way. Here we go. And let's move on. <laughs> I'm over here to the old meat section. And this uh, section I think is specifically designed for me. I'll probably order up some uh, ribeyes over here. They got a lot of really good selection over here. Piedmontese beef. These guys are, uh, they got the best meat. I'm gonna check that out and get a couple of those. Get uh, one of these guys to help me over here. What's going on? How you guys doing? Good, what can I do for you? I'd like to get a couple of ribeyes, please. Maybe, uh, about five of them or so. Uh, yeah, Piedmontese. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Look at that meat. Looks wonderful. Four point six nine pounds. Starting to rack up the price already. <clears throat> it's still exciting for me, even after all these years of eating meat. Still get pumped up. Great, thank you. Here we go. Meat number one. <laughs> Bammo. So now, that's if you're making some dough, right? You can afford the ribeye, you can afford the filet. And if not, if you're uh, you know, trying to find uh, other types of meat that are maybe less expensive, then you might have to go over here or you might have to do some shopping at Costco. You might have to buy some of this kind of regular ground beef. You can see, you know, the unit price is much less, right? Then also, uh, this is like an 80-20 ground beef. Now, if you wanna try to, you know, go, go towards the grass-fed, you start to see how much more you start to pay as soon as it gets to be grass-fed. It starts to really tack on some price to it. But if you start to compare these two, this one's uh, quite a bit leaner. This one's 5% five, 5 leaner, right, than this one. But price-wise, we're, we're dealing with like about a, about a buck more. I guess the unit price is a little different on these. But the, the higher the quality, obviously, the more you're going to spend. And I have done a ketogenic diet with money, and I've done a ketogenic diet broke. So I wouldn't be able to afford coming over here and getting like these Kobe burgers uh, back in the day. But now I can make choices uh, that are a little bit different. So if you're on a budget, you just might wanna get the higher fat meat, you might have to uh, go for the lower quality and maybe occasionally you go for the higher level, the higher quality of meat. Um, you'd go with like a certified Piedmontese type of steak or you'd go with a filet mignon. Maybe occasionally you can do that if it's, if it's uh, in your budget. Let me see what else I'm gonna get. That's a uh, ribeye. So tri-tip, tri-tip, is, is really good uh, for people that are maybe on a little bit more of a budget. Now, something that I wanna point out too, is you have to keep in mind, we're gonna be buying a lot less bullshit. Like, if you buy cereal and you're gonna complain to me about price, then <laughs> I'm gonna flip out. And the reason why I'm gonna flip out is because what's, what's in a cereal box, it costs you like four or five bucks, and it's mainly just sugar. It's just processed bullshit that's in there. When you're buying meat, now we're buying protein, protein and fat. That's gonna be good for our body, something that can actually be a little bit more sustainable for our body to run off of something more sustainable for us to get the body that we want, as opposed to the cereal, which is gonna be something that you're gonna be uh, craving quite a bit, and you're probably gonna overeat on it. Again, sugar ain't bad, I say this all the time. 
but we have a tendency to eat things when we, once we start to have multiple ingredients, start to have three, four, five, six, and probably up to about 20 ingredients in a box of cereal. And this is pretty much just one. I go home, cook this up, dump some salt on it, and we're good to go. So you gotta always leave with a tri-tip, that's important. Tri-tip is a, tri-tip has fat, actually you can see the fat. The fat is actually in there, and that is all very edible. As opposed to sometimes, when you have a cut like this, sometimes this stuff is too, like, tendony and too weird and too chewy to sometimes eat. It really depends on the cut, <clears throat> it depends on the company that it comes from. <clears throat> makes a big difference, but this is really good, and it's it's also um, what you'll also find with a tri-tip is it's not extremely lean, but it's also not extremely fat, but it tastes really good. It's going to be really tender. So there we go with some meat. If we want to get into some chicken, I don't normally buy chicken all that much, but if I'm going to buy chicken, and if you want to start to save money, you ever buy one of these guys? Like this stuff is that's seven dollars. Like that's a joke, that's so inexpensive. And like for most people, this is you know probably more than one meal, right? Probably might take you a little bit to eat that thing. Then also if we kind of go over here into, like I, I, don't, I wouldn't buy you know uh, skinless, boneless chicken breast, not a fan. Plus the price is, is usually not great either on those. And I don't really like the taste. I'd rather have something that's got some skin on it. It just depends how foo-foo you want to get with all this. You can kind of climb the ladder and you can get this, you know, like air chilled and all these kind of special things. It depends on your beliefs and what you believe in. Uh, no added water, like you can get as fancy with it as you want. Now you can also go to the frozen section and buy some stuff. That might be a better option if you're on a tight budget. But again, you see how inexpensive some of this uh, chicken can really be, especially if you buy like chicken thighs, <clears throat> they can also be inexpensive. Let's do a flippy do. These guys right here, I'll get some of these. These, this is grass-fed beef, 100% grass-fed beef, and it has a blend of some other stuff in it. It's got uh, this one has salt, cracked pepper. You're gonna find like some of these have some different things in them. It's like whatever you enjoy. These are gonna be super delicious. But this is um, the like. Uh, the vegetables are already mixed into the meat and it tastes really, really good. So I'll occasionally buy some of those. Again, that's 100% grass fed and that's gonna come with a price tag on it. You know, like these higher quality things that taste good, it's gonna come with a price tag. But for me, it's really important that I'm excited about the food that I eat. I think once somebody starts to transition into eating healthier foods, they think everything's gotta taste disgusting. Everything I eat, every single meal that I have, taste awesome. I look forward to every meal that I have. And it's because I get options like this. We got bison, we got elk, we got venison, we got wild boar. Have you ever looked at uh, venison, how lean venison is, or elk? Check this out. Uh, this, is, uh, this is elk, it's got 10 grams of fat. That's pretty low. And then if you want something even leaner, you got like, and you don't want chicken, Try some game meat, try some venison. If you're trying to save some dough, maybe you have a friend that's a hunter. A lot of times people are willing to, uh, to share some of, the, some of their wealth with you and share some of the meat with you. I actually personally like elk a lot and you think about it from the way that an elk looks in nature, they're pretty damn jacked and they're pretty damn athletic. They can move around like crazy. So it make, makes sense that good healthy meat comes from them. We also have like some ground bison over here, as you can see. And again, these things are gonna come, these things are gonna come with a price tag, right? And why are they expensive? They're expensive. These foods are expensive for multiple reasons, but reason number one is you have to feed them. You have to feed this food. The food that you're buying uh, in these middle aisles is dead. It has virtually no nutrients in it and it never needed to be fed. Maybe it needed to be harvested at some point. Maybe it needed some water. Maybe it needed some sunlight at some point. But a lot of these things uh, start to be just uh, really tons and tons of ingredients, more so than anything else. And by the time you get, by the time you boil it all down and you end up with like a bag of Doritos or a bag of uh, sour cream potato chips, which tastes delicious, 
you end up with a bag of not a whole lot and there's really no nutrients in it. Whereas we are paying a higher premium here, we are paying a higher price, but we're paying it and we're uh, doing something good for ourselves because we're packing in some of those nutrients. Sometimes people get a stick up their butt when it comes to bacon. I actually enjoy bacon. I don't eat it that often. How much bacon do I eat in a week or a month? Uh, might be lucky if I eat an entire pound of bacon in the course of a month. So it's not like I'm consuming tons of it every single day. Um, I might even be lucky if I ate a pound of it in, in the course of two months. Again, you can go as foofy as you want and you can start to see the prices of you know this one versus that one and it start you know just you know pick the one that fits your budget the best <clears throat> i usually buy some of these uncured bacons with no nitrates and stuff but like i don't have any evidence or proof uh that i don't have any evidence or proof that that's bad for you i just try to buy the hippiest kind that i can get and uh for some of you that haven't tried, you know, things like this, this is almost more like a Canadian style of bacon. It says European brand, center cut bacon. Stuff like this is phenomenal. It's always good to try stuff, because like I said earlier, you want to really look forward to the foods that you're eating. Oh, whoops, I got carried away there. I, I don't know how this got in my hands. Cookie dough is like my favorite thing. I could eat all that cookie dough right there. A uh, little tip for you, never shop while you're hungry. Uh, it's a huge mistake because you'll end up with tons of shit like that in your shopping cart. Happens to me all the time. So I gotta actually buy some bacon. So I bought, I bought that one uh, the other day with habanero in it. And that was a little crazy. I will try this one this time. But this was uh, this ended up cooking up super fast. So if you do buy this kind of bacon, be careful because it can cook up a little faster than you're prepared for. Right here, we got a lot of cured meats and things like that, and people get a stick up their ass about this stuff too. Look, if you're on a ketogenic style diet or on a carnivore style diet, your main job is to make sure that you don't eat carbohydrates. So if you can consume, if you consume stuff like this here and there, it's totally fine. This shouldn't make up the majority of your diet though. As we go over here, we're in the hot dog section. So people get all pissy about hot dogs too, but again, remember your job as a, as a keto carnivore person is to mainly just make sure that you're not eating carbohydrates. So this ensures that you're not eating carbohydrates because as it says here, oh, there's a gram in there, but there's always gonna be trace carbohydrates in just about everything. This is 100% uh, beef. This is, I believe it's like grass fed and everything. No nitrates, no added blah, 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 blah. So it's foo-foo, right? It's, um, I'm not gonna say that hot dogs are ever good for you, these are still hot dogs. But again, I'm trying to find food that I look forward to. Now when it comes to vegetables, I don't mind eating vegetables and I try to get stuff that's fermented here and there just to mix that into my diet as well. So I'll buy pickles on occasion. These things are delicious. I'll throw them on the burgers that I cook up. More fermented food, we got sauerkraut. How are we gonna have hot dogs without having sauerkraut? This is raw sauerkraut. This is a probiotic. Whammo. And anything from over there? No. Um, this is some breakfast sausage I bought the other day. I cooked some of this up when I cooked up a bunch of uh, egg yolks the other day and it was delicious, it was really good. You see, see you start to have some decent options when it comes to some of these hot dog type of deals. This is a grass fed beef. As you make your way into like kind of looking at some other things like teriyaki pineapple, <laughs> We're not gonna be able to eat that because that's gonna have a lot of sugar and a lot of carbohydrates in it. Bratwurst, bangers, like all that stuff is fair game on a ketogenic diet and it's delicious. Here's some more meatballs up here. Let's see what we got with these meatballs. Maybe we scored something. Grass-fed meatballs. Meatballs usually have carbs and let's see what we get. Oh, upside down. We have, uh, we got seven carbs. 
Uh, I don't know. I can't do it because it's it's uh, times four, so it'd be too many, too many carbs. See you later, meatballs. Polish sausage. I love that. My mom used to make that a lot as a kid. That's these guys, kabasa. This kind of stuff is actually really good and super cheap. It's really good because it's um, it's insanely keto. Like the fat is through the roof. Yeah, 14 grams of fat and six grams of protein. And there's six servings of this. Holy crap. So that's a lot. But that kind of stuff can be very, uh, very keto. It can help get your, uh, your fat calories through the roof, which is super important when you're starting a ketogenic diet. Once you're on the ketogenic diet and once you're already into ketosis, you don't need to worry about having your fat as crazy high. Mosey on down here to the cheese. One of my favorite parts. Um, I love uh, Telemach cheese. There's uh, some cheddar, there's some Colby Jack. Tough choice, what do you guys think? What should I go with? All right, I'll go with the Kobe Jack, you got it. The cheese is convenient, it's a portable protein, really easy to carry around. You can bring it with you anywhere. There's one gram of carbohydrates per little thing of this, and uh, seven grams of fat, four grams of protein. And then again, as we start to look at some of these pre-packaged uh, cheeses, you can get as foofy and as hippy as you want. We got, this is grass fed. I don't know what difference it makes, but I got the money for it, so I buy it. If you ain't got the money for it, then don't worry about it. I never used to, it never made a difference. Kerrygold, Kerrygold butter, a lot of you guys are familiar with. They make cheese as well. They have a lot of great products. I like their cheese, I like their butter. And you can buy that, Famo. If you want shredded cheese, you can buy shredded cheese. These are all things that you can eat on a ketogenic diet very easily. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Cured meats, cured meats rock. You know, people that aren't eating cured meats are out of their mind. They taste delicious. Salami, um, you got uh, prosciutto, you got all kinds of stuff. And, and these things are, are really good on a ketogenic diet. Now, I know some people are, ha are flipping their lid right now. They're like, you can't eat that stuff. But anyone that's on any diet, is gonna be cheating on their diet and they're gonna eat stuff that's off of their plan. This is still on my plan because it still doesn't have hardly any carbohydrates in it. And I recognize that this is not the mainstay of my diet. This would not be something, it's not making up 80 or 90% of my diet, it's making up a very small amount. So yeah, very low in carbohydrates, we'll get some of that, whammo. Um, even pepperoni. There's companies out there like Applegate, is a great company. They um, don't put a lot of crap into their, you, what you're really looking for is just to make sure that the product doesn't have a ton of ingredients. This is just uh, pepperoni. And my kids, my kids dig pepperoni, so I'll buy pepperoni. And my son likes, uh, he likes peppered, where's the peppered one? He likes Italian salami that's peppered. And I don't see it here, oh no. He's very specific with the pepper on there. So I'll, I'll uh, worry about that later. Keep cruising, keep cruising. So my kids, um, you know, so they have something healthy, so they have protein sources. I will buy them some uh, deli, deli meat here and there. Sometimes I'll just roll over to the deli that's right here. Other times I'll just, you know, grab some stuff from here. Again, I try to pick stuff out that I feel is like the best option for them. They like turkey, I believe. So I will go with, they're gonna want honey maple. They're gonna want that stuff flavored. I don't think they dig ham. I already bought cheese. So all they'll need is some bread and they'll throw it on there and they'll have a sandwich. But it's just something convenient, easy for them to make themselves. My daughter's 12, my son is 15. So they know how to make a sandwich here and there. Um, my son, and my daughter, they actually both love hummus. So anytime the kids find anything that's like just remotely healthy, that has protein in it, I buy it for them. Uh, junk food, I don't buy for them. I only let, my, my, I only let uh, my wife do that for them. So I'll get them some classic hummus, wa-bam. Basically garbanzo beans. Uh, salsa is something that you can have on a ketogenic diet. 
Um, I sometimes use pico, I sometimes use guacamole. I don't really do that as much anymore because I don't need as much flavor as I used to, just because I got used to the way I eat now. So here we go. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, beer, unfortunately beer is not really part of a diet. It's definitely not part of like a ketogenic style diet. However, occasionally you're going to be, uh, you know, enjoying yourself, enjoying some good time with some friends and you do need to go for it and you do need to drink if, if you like drinking. Um, I personally have, you know, I used to weigh 330 pounds. I came down from 330 pounds and weighed like 270 and made a lot of progress even with some alcohol in the diet but I never really drank beer. I, I, more, I more so drank wine. Um, I don't think that, I think whatever diet you decide to follow, I think that your diet should allow for you to cheat or allow you to celebrate here and there and allow, allow you to enjoy life as much as you possibly can. I'm a huge believer in that. And one way that I unwind and one way that I have a lot of fun with my wife is sometimes we'll go out and have a couple drinks. So. You should have a diet that allows you to have some flexibility somewhere at some point to be able to drink. But how many times a week can you drink and make progress? Probably not many, maybe once, maybe only once a week. Sorry. I always buy this guy right here. I just buy this big giant thing and uh, then I just, I, I mix it with some water because this is like concentrated, super, super crazy strong coffee. So I buy this and mix some up here and there at home. Ooh. These aisles, uh, I don't need to go down these aisles at all because there's just a bunch of bullshit in them. So, you know, you got like, I mean, I love Oreo cookies. I grew up eating boxes of Oreo cookies. That's how I got fat in the first place. And then I can also show you these other things over here led me to be fat too. All this shit right here. Look at this. If we were, if we were to take out if we were to take out all the things that are offenders of why America is obese and we took it out of any grocery store, but even specifically this grocery store, this place would be empty. You would have like the butcher in the back and then you might have some like dairy products, some vegetables and some fruit. <laughs> Rest of the place would be empty. It would only have to be uh, maybe just this big. Probably be plenty of space to have all the healthy food that you need. But this is uh, America and this is the way that we live our lives and we eat junk and we eat, we drink sugar all day, we drink caffeine all day. I mean, it's insane, you know, like that, that one of these has like, you know, 40 grams of sugar in it and people just allow their kids to drink it as if it's like not a big deal. It's a big deal it's, and it's a huge problem and there's kids that are, there's people that are pre-diabetic and they're like 15, 15 years old. I got friends that are in their early 20s that have been labeled pre-diabetic because they just didn't know, they didn't have the knowledge, the parents didn't have the knowledge that this is not a game, this is not a joke, this is your fucking life and you need to do something about it. You need to start to make changes like, you should be insulted by this. You really should be. This should like, this should make you angry. <laughs> you shouldn't be okay with this stuff. To have it occasionally, to mix it in occasionally, to have it be part of your food, to occasionally get some uh, pita chips to dip, you know, to uh, use to, to uh, dip your hummus in, like I'm gonna buy right now for my kids. Not a huge problem, but does it make up a huge percentage of their diet? Then there's fake health too. There's tons of fake health. Be an athlete, drink Gatorade, right? Now they have Gatorade Zero, which is a step in the right direction because now we have a huge reduction in the amount of carbohydrates and amount of calories that are in there. So that's a, that's a huge step in the right direction. But all this stuff, I think people think that Gatorade's not, uh, not insulting their metabolism at all, but it is. There's just a lot of sugar in these things. There's 22 grams of sugar and there's basic, they always make the math hard, 2.5 servings. But anyway, there's a lot of sugar in that thing. That's a lot. It's just sugar. And it's not for a reason. Like you don't need sugar because you played a baseball game. You certainly do not. Carbohydrates are not essential. You do not need carbohydrates. You might feel like you need carbohydrates, but you don't actually need them. Buy some omega-3 eggs, throw them in the old cart. Got them, I'm ready to rock. Just getting some meat. Yeah, yeah, we got it, thank you. Appreciate it.
You too. All right, we got our shopping done. We got everything that we need. Pretty excited to go home and eat this meat. Bought some stuff for the fam as well. Bought some stuff for the kids, got them some uh, fruit. And sometimes I'll buy vegetables, but I didn't show you guys buying vegetables because who really cares? Uh, basically just, my diet is made up of primarily eggs and meat, cheese, occasional slingshot protein shake, coffee, water. That's about it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Put your questions down below. I'll try to answer as many as I possibly can. And let me know what else you'd like to see from me in terms of shopping or in terms of diet. Let me know what's up. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.